Moss here with our final chapter from The Phantom Tollbooth. Chapter 20 is called Goodbye and Hello. So remember when we last left, they had celebrated for three days and Milo was saying goodbye to all of his friends. As the pleasant countryside flashed by and the wind whistled a tune on the windshield, it suddenly occurred to Milo that he must have been gone for several weeks. I do so hope nobody's been worried, he thought, urging his car to go faster. I've never been away this long before. The late afternoon sun had turned now from a vivid yellow to a warm, lazy orange, and it seemed almost as tired as he felt. The road raced ahead in a series of gentle curves that began to look familiar, and off in the distance, the solitary toll booth appeared, a welcome sight indeed. In a few moments, he reached the end of his journey deposited his coin and drove through. And almost before realizing it, he was sitting in the middle of his own bedroom again. It's only six o'clock, he observed with a yawn. And then in a moment, he made an even more interesting discovery. And it's still today. I've only been gone for one hour. He cried in amazement, for certainly he never realized how much could be done in such a short amount of time. And it's still today. Oh, I reread that part, sorry. Milo was much too tired to talk and almost too tired for dinner. So without a murmur, he went off to bed as soon as he could. He pulled the covers around him, took a last look at his room, which somehow seemed very different than he'd remembered it, and drifted off into a deep and welcome sleep. School went very quickly the next day, but not, as, but not quickly enough. For Milo's head was full of plans and his eyes could see nothing but the toll booth and what lay beyond. He waited imp impatiently for the end of class and when time finally came, his feet raced his thoughts all the way back to the house. Another trip, another trip, I'll leave right away. They'll all be so glad to see me. He stopped abruptly at the door of his room for where the toll booth had been just the night before, there was now nothing at all. He searched frantically throughout the apartment, but it had vanished just as mysteriously as it had come. In its place was another bright blue envelope, which was addressed simply for Milo, who knows the way. He opened it quickly and read, Dear Milo, you have now completed your trip courtesy of the Phantom Toll Booth. We trust that everything has been satisfactory and hope you understand why we had to come and collect it. You see, there are so many other boys and girls waiting to use it. It's true that there are many lands you still to visit, some of which are not even on the map, and wonderful things to see that no one has yet imagined. But we're quite sure that if you really want to, you will find a way to reach them all by yourself. Yours truly. The signature was blurred and he couldn't read it. Milo walked sadly to the window and squeezed himself into one corner of the large armchair. He felt very lonely and desolate as his thoughts turned far away to the foolish, lovable bug, to the comforting assurance of talk standing next to him, to the erratic, excitable dine, to little Alec, who he hoped would someday reach the ground, to rhyme and reason without whom wisdom withered, and to the many, many others he would always remember. And yet, even as he thought of these things, he noticed that the sky was a lovely shade of blue and that not one cloud, and that one cloud had the shape of a sailing ship. The tips of the trees had pale young buds and the leaves were a rich, deep green. Outside the window, there was much to see and hear and touch. Walks to take, hills to climb, caterpillars to watch as they strolled through the garden. There were voices to hear and conversations to, to and wander and the special smell of each day. And in that very room in which he sat, there were books that could take him anywhere, things to invent and make and build, and all the puzzle and excitement of everything he didn't know, music to play, songs to sing, and worlds to imagine, and then someday make real. His thoughts started eagerly about as everything looked new and worth trying. Well, I would like to make another trip, he said, jumping to his feet, but I really don't know when I'll have the time. There's just so much to do right now. The end. I would love it if you shared something in the comments with me about the book, if you read it with me. Um, like, what's your favorite part? What was your favorite land? Remember the map?
that. There were so many different places that Milo went. I would say my favorite was probably um, the Land of Sight. I thought it was funny when Milo took over the orchestra. So that was probably my favorite part. So share something about what you liked in the story in the comments below. And thank you.